Because we do have in the studio one of the voices of chess. He's uh, one of the best commentators around. He's certainly a man that inspired my passion for the game, Maurice Ashley. Thanks so much, Ivanka. I appreciate being here. Yeah. He was one of the best. He retired. He stepped back from chess commentary. What have you been doing, Maurice? I've been doing a lot of stuff. I <laughs> retirement has been good. Uh, you know, I've, I've done a bunch of chessable courses now, seven and counting. Wow. Uh, I wrote a couple of books as well. I know. I want to ask you about... some corporate speaking. So it's, it's really been a busy time. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but before we get into your books, you were very much part of the Cairns Chess Queens Award. That was presented to Irina few days ago at the opening ceremony. Can you tell us a bit more about the award? Well, I, you know, I have been a consultant to the club, retired, but still a, a friend of the family, mm -hmm. if you will. And I have definitely been thinking a lot about the things that can be done to, to help various groups, women. underrepresented groups in chess, which are near and dear to my heart. One of them being, of course, uh, women, the lack of women at the top level. And so I had this thought, which eventually became the Karen Chess Queens Award, uh, and kudos to Joy Bray for embracing it, running with the ball. Uh, kudos to Rex as well for embracing it. And absolute kudos to Jeannie yeah, Singfield who said, so. yeah, this is an idea I like. Let's get behind it. She added her own special twist to the concept. And it turned out to be a, a wonderful thing. And it was, it was great to see how emotional Irina was mm -hmm. as she got the award. And to also see the, the tweets that are coming out from various parties, the young girls who feel super inspired to see that this is actually happening. Yeah. Uh, tears of uh, happiness in Alice Lee. <laughs> she said, yeah, the timing's beautiful, Jeannie. I'm going to become a grandmaster and uh, inspiring her. Yeah, I'm kind of curious though, because I remember having a conversation with you about women's chess in uh, Norway last year. So how long have you been sitting on this news? Well, the, I, it, it hadn't been news yet. It was just an idea back mm -hmm. then. And, and so I was exploring the various reactions that women might have about what's going on in the women's game. And I have to say that it was kind of sad, frankly. Uh, a lot of people seemed jaded. A lot, of, a lot of women felt like they weren't being heard and would never be heard. That the kind of attitude in the chess world that wasn't very supportive of women, in some, in some cases downright hostile, uh, that, that, that would remain, no matter what voices spoke up. And I felt like they really needed an ally. And I think in the chess world, it's important that the prominent men speak out and be allies in this space, not just let the status quo continue. So my voice is not as big as a lot of others. I think there are a lot of major voices that can come down and disregard and, and make some critical points in this area. But whatever I can do, I think it's important. Absolutely much appreciated. And uh, moving on to your recent projects, I know that you've uh, just released two books. Uh, one of them is Move by Move, lessons, uh, Life Lessons on and Off the Chessboard. Tell us a little bit more about the book. Well, chess has done so much for me. I mean, the way it has changed my character, uh, really uh, formed me as a person. Uh, and I pass those lessons on to people in general when I speak to them. Uh, those are the kind of wisdom elements that you get from chess. And I think it affects us all, but we often don't articulate that uh, in a public way. We're always talking about moves and openings and variations, but what about the life lessons that we get from the game? So I felt that this was a good idea, compelled to write just such a book, and that's what it became. That's what Move by Move is. Mm -hmm. And so what was the biggest life lesson? There are so many life lessons. Everybody asks about the biggest one. <laughs> Why do we the, the, the life lessons? There, there are just so many lessons you get from chess. Uh, respecting your opponent, it, the, the other person is so smart that you can't just think that you're the only ones like, sitting there at the board. The fact that the journey is actually what gives value to the destination. It's not about setting your mind on the goal only. You're going to be you're going to be uh, really formed in the crucible of competition and that, that quest is what's going to make you a better person uh, overall in life. Uh, so these are just lessons that drip on the chessboard constantly, uh, the kind of things that you end up learning. And also huge is learning from loss. So many people are afraid, they're almost terrified at losing. Uh, Irina Crush once said that somebody told her to celebrate losing. I know Yasser didn't like when he heard that. No, no, what are you talking about? But the reality is, 
Do you really remember your wins as much as you remember those losses? Those losses are painful. They stay with you. You have to think about them and you think, what do I need to do to become better? And for me, that was always huge to explore my losses and, and my mistakes intimately so that I could become a much better player and a much better person as well. So these are the types of lessons I think are important to share with people that chess does in uh, just such a powerful way. And uh, talking about becoming better, I know you also wrote a children's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Chess, which I actually have had the privilege of looking at. It's an absolutely beautiful, inspiring book. Tell us more about that. I was approached by a company in England, as a matter of fact, uh, Magic Cat, and they wanted to do a life-changing magic series. So it wasn't just chess, it was baking and drumming and skateboarding, and they chose chess and thankfully reached out to me to do this one. And just a beautiful project. I loved it. It was also short, so it was easy to do. So that <laughs> makes it great. You know, you don't have to write too many words. The illustration uh, that beautiful. Dennis did were absolutely yeah. fabulous. And being able to honor my family as well and my friends who helped me along the way. And then in, maybe inspire some kid who reads the book and wants to play chess. It very much tells your life story as well to the children, and that's what I, was, I also really enjoyed, that it was Absolutely. a different life story that we not kind of traditionally associate with chess. Yes, uh, growing up in the parks in Brooklyn, learning chess at 14, uh, getting beaten in high school, uh, and not even making my high school chess team, which <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> Imagine telling Abhimanyu Mishra. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? I could do a simul against my high school chess team. But I just wasn't that good un until I hit college. And But that quest, playing chess in the parks with the hustlers, uh, and then the, the members of the Black Bear School who really formed me also as a person, uh, it, it's a little bit of a different journey to the Grandmaster title. And I, I hope that those who sort of don't have that normal, or what they think is a normal quest, you gotta be a little kid who starts at six, you've gotta have a trainer by the time yeah. you're eight, if you're not a GM by 12, you're over the hill, you're it's a loser. It's 11, it's 11. It's 11. <laughs> you, know, it's like, you gotta one up the next person. No, it, it, everyone has a different life story. You, uh, there's no way you're coming on the show without me not getting in a, some pokes. And uh, uh, for those of you at home who don't realize this, Maurice is the underachiever in the family, the underachiever. We've got sibling rivalries going on here, but talk about being the underachiever in Thanks, the family. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and well, what's that like? Because we got the siblings going on here too. They push each other. Absolutely. Well, my brother is a three-time world champion kickboxer, and my sister is a six-time world champion boxer. Uh, so I'm only a grandmaster. <laughs> like, I never became a world champion. And, like why? You know, I might have to go for that world senior championship title. I, I just want to be. I, don't invite me to your Thanksgiving Day dinners. We all love each other. We all push each other uh, now. Now, <laughs> before the rivalry was heated, but we're super That's supportive. What I'm very proud of my siblings. They're also both in the halls of fame in their respective sports as well. So you know, it's it's quite a family. Right. My my parents did good. Okay, yeah. got to give me a pick for the tournament. Who's going to win the fourth edition of the Cairns Cup? You know you're going to be on the spot. And I'm going to, and here's the list just to remind you. If you go with Arena because she's a New Yorker, uh, I salute mean, you. I, mean, I, I hate to be super, super boring, especially after round one. But, but, that, but that number one seed looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, you she got two. Damn good right there. You, know? you, you got two partners on that pick if you want to Yeah, pretend. she's quiet, that lady, but she's deadly yeah, at the chessboard, and she's in great form as well. It's They're going to have to slow her down, and she doesn't seem like she gets frazzled by anything. So, she's yeah. impressive. And, she uh, you know, and also, she's got a, a three-letter name. My favorite player of all time was Tall. Yeah. So I just switched to Ellen. Ellen and, and, and Tall. I mean, she's, uh, that girl's yeah. a boss. And there's no way I'm letting you off the show without, uh, in New York, they've got that ticker on uh, New York Times Square, and you appeared on that ticker. Uh, who told you about that? Well, How did I, that happen? I personally didn't, but my book did, Move by Move. Right. I did appear on the billboard in Times Square, digital billboard. Right. Uh, that was crazy. <laughs> As a New Yorker, you go to Times Square. First right? of all, we hardly ever go to Times Square. Okay. But when you do, the billboards are just going crazy everywhere. And right. Like, how do these people get on here? Right. And to see my book actually appear 
in Damn. lights in Times Square. I actually didn't get to go there physically, but I had my son go and get out his phone and right. put on FaceTime. Right. And then when it came up, we were all just thrilled. So that was a great moment to share as well. Happy absolutely. Father's Day. Happy Father. We're not worthy. The yeah, billboard abs- man. I mean, it's absolutely stunning that you got that kind of achievement. But I just wanted to ask you, you're going to be a keynote speaker for the St. Louis Chess Conference, which is happening at the end of October. What are you going to talk about? The title actually copy the title of my children's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Chess. So I will mm. be talking about what we've we talked about so far, the life lessons of chess and, and how it can impact Everyone, not just young people, but everyone, the greatness of our royal game. And uh, how can people attend the conference? Well, it's easy. Just go on the website, the St. Louis yeah. Chess Club.org website, and sign up. Yeah, register. It's not just me, it's Show Gary up. Kasparov, it's Judith Poldar. <laughs> you know, these are people who were my heroes when I was a kid growing up. And I'm older than Judith, but I wasn't, like I said, I started late. So watching her just storm the barricades. As a youngster, she was such a, an inspiration and remains so today. I got to pinch myself to think that I'm going to be on the same panel as those two legends. Dang. Just absolutely yeah. extraordinary. Let's talk about loud voices. And once again, the dates of that uh, they, conference? It's happening 24th to 26th of October. And if you do want to find out more, you can visit the website, which is stlchessconference.org. Maurice, thank you so much for coming on. Don't be a stranger. You know you're always welcome. Always a pleasure. Yeah. And yesterday we had a six-hour broadcast, so we're going to leave you here all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. I'm retired. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> my 15 minutes. <laughs> thank you very much thank for covering much. for us. <laughs> thank yeah. you. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. And our results uh, thus far, we have one.